During the 1990s, NFL franchises such as the Dallas Cowboys, the San Francisco 49ers, the Green Bay Packers, the Buffalo Bills, and the Denver Broncos had tremendous success. However, on the other end of that spectrum, some franchises weren't so competitive. 90s Sports Nostalgia presents the top 5 worst NFL franchises during the 1990s. And don't forget if you like this video, subscribe, give us a like, and check out other 90s Sports Nostalgia videos. The decade began with a lot of intrigue for the Indianapolis Colts as they acquired the top overall pick in the 1990 draft from the Atlanta Falcons to select quarterback Jeff George. Indianapolis gave up high quality players and tackled Chris Hinton, wide receiver Andre Risen, and a first and a fifth round pick to get the gunslinging quarterback. Unfortunately for Colts fans, with the lack of talent around George, Indianapolis struggled. The 1-15 campaign in 1991 was one of the worst seasons in NFL history as the Colts were outscored by a whopping 238 points. However, after the Colts ironically traded George to Atlanta, the NFL team of the Hoosier State did overachieve with a pair of 9-7 records during the 95-96 and 96 seasons including an AFC Championship game appearance. But subsequently, the Colts came back down to earth quite a bit with a pair of 3-13 seasons in 1997 and 1998. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers without a doubt was a worse franchise during the 1980s. Tampa Bay had recorded seven consecutive double-digit loss seasons heading into the 1990s. Maintaining true to form, the Bucs continued that streak with six of their next seven seasons being double-digit loss seasons. Many pointed Tampa Bay's problems toward owner Hugh Culverhouse for being incredibly cheap, but when Culverhouse passed away in 1994, fortunes began to slowly change. Tony Dungy and his Tampa 2 defense came to town in 1996 and better talent was being drafted, which included players like Warren Sapp, Derek Brooks, and Rondé Barber. The Bucks did make two playoff appearances during the decade, including an NFC Championship game appearance. If it weren't for the 1999 Super Bowl winning season, the Rams would be number one. If we take away the Rams' 1999 season, the Rams averaged only five wins a season between 1990 and 1998. Son, this game is important. The Bears are playing the Rams, and if you lose to the Rams, you get thrown out of the league. <laughs> Jim Everett was a solid quarterback during the 80s, but his skills were quickly diminishing in the early 1990s. Moreover, the Rams were never able to improve their struggling defense during the 90s. The NFL team that plays in the desert had a disappointing decade in terms of drafting running backs. High second round picks Anthony Thompson, Chuck Levy, and Leland McRoy were far from meeting expectations. Cardinals 1993 first rounder, running back Garrison Hurst, had much greater success when he left Arizona for San Francisco. Furthermore, Arizona didn't have three first round picks during the decade. They forfeited the first round pick in 1990 because they drafted quarterback Tim Rosenbaugh in the supplemental draft. By the way, Rosenbaugh only started one year with the Cards, then traded the first round picks in 92 and 95 for wide receivers Randall Hill and Rob Moore. In addition, Arizona did extremely poor by drafting first rounders such as Andre Wadsworth and Tom Knight during the decade, and as a result, the Cardinals went 58 and 102 during the decade while being outscored by 870 points. During this era, Cincinnati Bengals owner Mike Brown was known for being cheap and not investing anything into the scouting department. As a result, Cincinnati was a horrendous franchise during the 1990s with the inability to draft NFL talent. To go along with that inability, the cheapness of Brown came into effect once again as Cincinnati failed to adjust to the new era of free agency to replace the Bengals' agent players from the previous decade. To make matters worse, in 1992, owner Mike Brown decided to hire Dave Shula instead of Bill Cowher. The losses kept piling on as Cincinnati went 52-108 during the decade while being outscored by their opponents by 949 points. 